use a colored background like that and you can immediately get different results hey everyone welcome to my new video this time i want to talk about lighting specifically hdri lights and whether you need to use them at all and if you do how to do it and just on a side note this is not an industry standard or theory lesson this is just how i do things and what i've discovered uh, on my journey creating 3d artworks so let's jump right into it and this is not a hands-on tutorial so you don't need to follow this at all you can just chill back and relax um, but i will create you know a sample scene real quick so we can test our materials and lighting on that so let me just um create you know a few primitives here and there to kind of have you know a variety of shapes in place and i will just go ahead and create this kind of a knot object so we can you know explore different kinds of reflections uh, by the way this is from the extra object add-on if you don't have it in the preferences go to extensions and download extra objects and now let me you know scale this a little bit and place it into the scene and let's just create some background here okay and i will set up a camera as well so this is something i want to render now now let me just add some subdivision and shade smooth and maybe here a little bit of a bevel. Like this. And yeah, now let's set up our render and I will switch to cycles and enable GPU, some denoising and for the render I'll enable GPU denoising and reduce the samples to something more manageable. And now if we preview the rendered, this is what we have in the default scene. There's some default light that was already present here and we can just maybe move it closer or something. Um, but you can see, you know, this is not very interesting at the moment. So let's figure out how to make it, you know, more appealing. Now, the first thing I want to do is to add some materials. So for example, for the knot here, um, we can add like metallic, uh, very reflective materials. So let's go with the metal property all the way up and reduce the roughness to something like this. And here, for example, this can be like glass, so we can increase the transmission and reduce the roughness as well. And we have some, you know, refraction happening there. And this can be like a basic glossy object like this. And please allow me a little bit of a plug here. If you really want to learn Blender in the most effective way, as fast as possible, please check out my courses. The link is in the description. You start with low poly design, but progress through more advanced techniques, all the way to full characters, you know, hard surface modeling, sculpting. It's all there for you, waiting to get you from where you are to where you want to get. So again, if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. Now you can see, even though we used like really flashy materials with a lot of reflections, this almost looks posterized. Um, there's not much happening there and it definitely doesn't look like you know a chrome metal or something like that uh, because we're definitely missing something and the thing we're missing in this case are reflections so very reflective materials what can make and break them are the reflections and if you for example have a whole scene built around this so you know some objects buildings or whatever or some stationery um, that would reflect into this object and you would get a better result but in case that you have only this simple scene and there's basically nothing happening around, um, you won't get any reflections. And this is one of the most cases where I tend to use the HDRI to create reflections and refine the look of my materials. So I don't necessarily use HDRIs as a source of lighting. I would still use the combination of HDRI and other lights, but the reason why I would use HDRI are the reflections. So let me expand this here and I will just go into the shader editor and import some HDRI. Now, there are multiple ways how to do this. Um, for example, there are a lot of HDRIs in polyhaven.com. Um, you can find a link in the description. And they even have a paid option that would allow you to import all of their HDRIs as you know, the asset library here in Blender, which is very handy. And I'm in no way affiliated with that. It's just something that I use and I want to show it to you because I use it in a lot of my process videos or tutorials. So then maybe if you watch my older or the future videos and you wonder how did I get the HDRI, um, this is the way how I get it. So just in the asset browser, 
you can see I have these HDRIs and they're all imported via the Polyhaven, you know, paid add-on. So let me just select the one that looks fine. Um, for example, something, um, let me check the skies here. Um, something that doesn't have a lot of ground around. Um, yeah, maybe something like this would look fine. And the way it works here, you just drag and drop it into your scene and you get your HDRI set up right away. So let me just switch back here to the shader editor. And now we'll switch this to world because right now we're in the object. And if I change to world, this is where I get to edit um, what's happening around our scene. And here you can see this is the HDRI I dragged and dropped into the scene and it comes as a shader group. So if I tap into this, you can see the whole setup right here and it includes the background node. So for example, if you import the HDRI manually, you would need to include this background node. So let's do that right now. I will search for background and include the shader background. And now I'll press shift A and import the texture. And instead of image texture, I will go for environment texture because that's the one you need when you use HDRI. And I'll just go ahead and open, you know, a sample HDRI. Now we can look through the camera and you can see the result. Now, suddenly there are much more reflections happening here. You can see the sky reflection right there and it looks much better but the lighting overall got very flat because it's coming from all of the sides and even though you have a single source of a stronger light um, on the hdri in the form of a sun um, it still comes off a little bit too flat so what i tend to do is to reduce the intensity of the hdri and supply the required lighting with artificial lights um, so here with the add-on you would just go ahead and you know reduce the strength the exposition value here and then place other lights. So I'll just go ahead and add an area light, make it maybe larger and much stronger and move it around here to create the result that I want basically. So something like this, maybe we can use something on the side here, larger and much stronger. And you can see there are new reflections added here for those lights, but the core reflections from the HDRI stay in place and you can really like tone it down and tone down the reflections from HDRI and then have much more control over these manual lights and how they affect your scene. So this is the one way to do it. If you don't have the add-on that will create this group for you, um, don't worry about this. I will now plug the other HDRI. So let me just plug in the background node. Uh, which is basically the default setting when you start a new project. There's a background node with a gray background. And now I'll just connect this new HDRI and let's have a look uh, which one this is. It's basically a dusky, you know, background uh, with a little bit of a warm light coming from the sun. So already a little bit more interesting here. And again, you can just reduce the strength here to kind of suppress the influence of the light. Um, by the way, if your HDRI is really large file, which they can be, um, it will take some time to update here. So you need to be a little bit patient when you're working with these values here. So you can just reduce the value, the strength of the texture here, and then, you know, play with the lights as usual, you know, move them around, create some nice lighting setups and generally have much more manual control around how your scene looks. So this is basically how I would approach when you need to use this high reflective, you know, flashy materials when you have them in your scene and your scene is not like fully built around and you need more reflections. HDRIs are definitely way to go, but just be careful with the light so that it just doesn't fill your scene with light and become flat. So this is definitely one way to go and how to leverage the HDRI um, and the results can get pretty realistic. Um, which might be a downside of all of this. Um, let me explain, uh, because sometimes you want to create the graphics or the artwork that's not realistic at all. Um, you want to have it really stylized. You might want to have, you know, much higher control over the colors um, you're using in your artwork um, when you're trying to work with um, with a smaller palette. So in cases like that, HDRI can make things a little bit more difficult. So, for example, um, 
in case that I'm not using, you know, uh, a metallic high reflective material. So let me just, you know, bring this all the way down. Now you can see uh, this is mostly white material. Still, there are a lot of reflections and gloss, um, but a lot of those reflections get overridden by the diffuse color of the material. And now here, let me, you know, change this color to something more, you know, vibrant. And here maybe we don't need to have the transmission in place and just want to use, you know, some subtle color and, you know, then in combination with some subtle background have, you know, a different kind of artwork. Something you might do for, you know, a brand um, that have a specific color palette and you want to match, you know, kind of their vibe and their setting. So we might want to introduce a little bit, you know, warmer lighting here and stuff like this. So um, we're still using the HDRI for our reflections, but as you can see here, we don't benefit too much from those reflections anymore because we don't have those kinds of materials in place. Um, but on the other hand, um, the lighting is a little bit too flat and I generally find this a little bit, you know, uninteresting. So what you can do right here is just unplug the HDRI and use a flat color environment. So here I would basically go back to strength of one here and use a colored background like that. And you can immediately get different results and basically fill those shadows with a little bit different color tone and basically stay within the palette. Because for example, if you know this red color and this, you know, pale blue and this kind of peach color and this violet color were the part of the you know, brand palette of what you're trying to create, then um, this would much better match, you know, the other assets that would be created for that brand. So again, you get much more color control over this and it looks much more illustrative, a little bit, you know, a little bit more playful. And generally for this kind of materials, you know, really reflective, but not physically behaving materials, whether it's metallic property or refraction, if you don't have those in place, you might come up better with using a simpler lighting setup like this, you know, with few lights around, um, because you can still see the reflections around because we have all of those lights. And what I tend to use when I want um, these high reflective materials um, to come to life a little bit more, I just create more lights around and they don't even need to be strong. So for example, I can just copy this around and make it really like just like 50 and you would still see um, the reflection happening there and if you make it smaller you can see you know influencing the scene in a very slight way uh, but the reflection is there as you can see and you can basically do multiple of those around and this way kind of simulate that there's some environment happening around um, the way HDRI basically projects um, that world of reflections. You can create like an artificial studio condition reflections for your objects using, you know, basic lights and, you know, placing them around your scene while still maintaining full color control, you know, with a colored background um, like this. So for this kind of design and this kind of graphics, I would probably not use HDRI at all. Um, only in case where I would basically convert this back to metallic material. Um, in this case, this get filled all of that blue color. So in this case, I would go probably and search for, you know, HDRI that would better um, match, that would better match my setting. But right away, you can see you lose all of that color properties, the color bleed from the background. Um, the way this can be remedied with the add-on, if you have the group, there's already a tint and warmed property built in here. So you can basically use just this and, you know, reduce the warmth and tint your artwork into basically more cold colors than achieve similar result as with the colored background. Uh, but still, even then, uh, it's not what I was looking for here. So in cases like this, I would probably just, you know, color this manually or try to create different surroundings for my scene to, you know, simulate some kind of reflections. And one more thing as a bonus note in the end, often what I see out there when you present your designs, whether, you know, if you send it to me in the DM or on Discord or in the comments, um, a lot of times I can see under lighted scenes um, where you spend a lot of time, you know, modeling and creating your scene and then it just comes off 
weird looking because there's not enough lighting there. And what I mean by that is, let me just simulate, uh, simulate it. A lot of times I see something like this, like this is my final render and this can basically kill any scene uh, out there, no matter how good you are, you know, with the modeling, with the sculpting, if you don't light it properly and don't balance your output, um, this will be never, you know, good enough. So uh, what you can do here is to play with the render settings and color management with, you know, different contrast settings. Um, that's the basic thing you can do you know, using high contrast or medium high contrast. Um, this can be, of course, over them. Um, you can just use none and use curves and produce the contrast on your own by adjusting the RGB curves directly like this. But if you're not experienced um, with this kind of color grading, um, you can just use some of these presets and get very good results right away. So you would just, you know, use maybe something like medium high contrast and then play with exposure until you get something really punchy. Um, that's the goal here, you know, get really punchy result uh, that can look something uh, like this. So yeah, as you can see, this is purely by duplicating few lights around, you know, creating a colored background for the colored ambience and playing with the contrast and with a little bit of brightness. So if you would have a scene that needs to be presented in this like really playful toy-like aesthetic, um, I think this is the way to go. Um, on the other hand, if you want a little bit more realistic setting or if you have materials that require a lot of reflections, then HDRI is definitely a uh, way to go. So yeah, that's just from my experience and you know how I create my artworks out there. So I really hope you enjoyed um, this little talk and please let me know in the comments if you want to see more information like this or you would rather see, you know, a new hands-on tutorial, um, please let me know. And also if you enjoyed this, please leave that like, it will really help me. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.